Good morning and happy Monday. Today we're gonna to be talking about getting up early again because I'm in the middle of my get up early challenge that I've been running on my blog and on Instagram. And we've been talking about that this month on Periscope. So we're gonna be talking about how to get up early even if you have young kids. This is a topic that's been highly requested by many people. So I'm excited to share with you some thoughts on that. So good morning. It's a holiday for some of you. Um, since we homeschool, it's not a holiday. Our kids just have to do school like normal. They don't really know that a lot of other kids get out of school today. But anyway, okay. So um, it is week two, day one of the Get Up Early Challenge. Yay, you're able to comment. And um, this morning, I woke up a few minutes before my alarm clock which was super exciting. I, I feel like my body's getting back into the habit of going to bed early, which makes such a difference in the getting up early. So we're gonna talk about how to get up early, even if you have young kids. Because a lot of moms have said, I love to get up early, but I have young kids. How on earth am I supposed to get up early when I have young kids? So I'm gonna share some things, but I want to first start off with saying this I'm all about grace, not guilt. So if you are in a season of life where you feel like there's no way that I can get up early, like seriously, just skip all of this, okay? Just skip all of this. I am doing this for those of you who say, I really, 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 really want to get up early. I just can't really figure out how. So I'm gonna give you some ideas and some suggestions. But if you feel like, you know what? Um, I just, I'm not supposed to be getting up early at this season of life. This is not for you. And this is not to make you feel in any way that you're doing something wrong because you aren't. You do what works for you, okay? And then also let's define early because I think so many people have this idea in their mind that um, getting up early is means you have to get up at 4.30 in the morning or 5.30 in the morning. Or um, for instance, for me, I've been talking about my 5 a.m. alarm and then people are saying, well, <laughs> I can't get up at 5 a.m. And I just wanna make it clear, I'm not asking you to get up at 5 a.m. This challenge, the Get Up Early Challenge, is not the Get Up at 5 a.m. challenge. It's not about getting up at 5 a.m. This challenge is for those of you who want to work on getting up early, to find your early. Find what that time is and work on that. Okay, so number one, with that aside, so keep that in mind, Number one is to cut the excuses. So I'm gonna go a little drill sergeant on you right here, but here's the thing. We can spend so much of our life living under lies. We live under the lies that I'm not good enough, I can't do that, I'm not X. So many people say, I'm not a morning person. Well, have you just told yourself that all your life or do you really know that? Have you actually tried getting up early consistently for three months and seen what happens? Because a lot of times we tell ourselves these things and I do this too. I tell myself I'm not good with directions and I can't figure out how to do that and I'm not crafty and I can't, you know, we tell ourselves these things and then we, when we tell ourselves something for long enough, it becomes the truth. Like Stacey said, we become who we say we are. Now, I truly believe that there are some people who thrive more in the morning and there are some people who thrive more in the evening. But until you've tried both ways, you can't really knock it and say, I'm not a morning person. So number one is to cut the excuses. Are you letting the belief that I can't get up early? When I get up early, I'm grouchy. When I get up early, I'm not productive. Are you letting those lies dictate how you live? Are you letting those lies become truth to you and that they're holding you back from even trying? So I really challenge you to ask yourself, what kind of messaging are you telling yourself about this and about all areas of life? And I'm, I'm asking myself the same thing. Cut the excuses, because you have to believe that you can before you'll actually try. 
Number two, go to bed early if you can. You are not going to successfully get up early if you stay up really late. You have to develop the discipline of going to bed early. And actually, um, next month, I think we're going to do a go to bed challenge because I was scared to do it this month because <laughs> it's something that I knew that I really need to work on. So I was going to work on getting up early, which was going to help me go to bed early. And then next month, I can really be consistent about that because it's something that I struggle with too. So I want you to ask yourself, what are you staying up doing at night? Is it productive or mindless? Some people at night, they get so much done. But I think there's a lot of other people who at night are doing mindless things. And now if you've intentionally decided, you know what, I'm gonna stay up and I'm gonna read a book because that's refreshing to me, that's one thing. But if you just are getting sucked down the rabbit hole of social media, or you're just kind of doing nothing because you're just trying to stall going to bed, then try getting going to bed early so that you can get up early. Just stop doing it. Develop the discipline of going to bed early if you can. Also challenge yourself, could you go to bed shortly after your kids go to bed? Now, for some of you, this will not work, and I am not asking for you to sacrifice your marriage for this. But possibly your husband is more of a morning person than an evening person, for those of you who are married. And maybe it would work better for your marriage if you went to bed soon after your kids went to bed and then you had time with your husband in the morning. Figure out what works for you and do that. So number one, cut the excuses. Number two, go to bed early if you can. Number three, this is one that I just want to put it out there. Try just getting up 15 minutes earlier. Instead of feeling like we have to revamp our entire schedule and our entire life and instead of getting up at 8 o'clock like I've been every single morning, I have to start getting up at 6 o'clock because that's what getting up early looks like. Maybe getting up early is just getting up 15 minutes earlier than you usually do. Even 15 minutes can make such a difference. In that 15 minutes, you can spend some time thinking. You can spend some time praying. You can spend some time exercising. You could spend some time journaling. You could spend some time reading God's word. You could spend some time planning your day. There's so much that you can do in 15 minutes. Now, obviously you can't do all of those things, but you could pick one or two and say every morning, I'm going to get up 15 minutes earlier and I'm going to do this. Start small. Don't try to overhaul your life overnight. Instead, say, you know what? Tonight, I'm going to challenge myself to go to bed 15 minutes earlier and get up 15 minutes earlier. So number one, cut the excuses. Number two, go to bed early if you can. Number three, get up 15 minutes earlier. Number four, take a nap when your kids do. So a lot of people say this, but I'm going to throw it out there because I think as moms, we feel like we cannot nap when our kids nap. But think with me about this. If you were able to get up an hour earlier and really knock out a lot of stuff and get a lot of stuff done during nap time, then you could lay down and just enjoy a nap. I know some, some moms that they even lay down and snuggle with their toddler and that's like their special time together and they both fall asleep. I have become more of a fan of napping. And last week there was one day where I had gotten up and I'd gotten so much stuff done. And it was, I think it was 9.30 or 9.45 and I thought, I don't think I'm gonna be able to last through the rest of this day. And so I laid down and took a nap, which now a lot of you probably couldn't do that, but I'm really blessed. We have a mother's helper who comes in a few days a week. My husband um, can if he's usually working in the morning, but if you know, he could help. It's usually our mother's helper. But so she was working with the kids and I was, I was finished with all of these big rocks. I'd done our morning homeschooling. I'd done, you know, the, the important things that I needed to get done. And so I was able to just lay down and take a short nap. And I felt so much better the rest of the day. And I didn't have any guilt because I was like, I got up early and I got so much done. 
so I can give myself the grace and the permission to take a nap. Now, maybe that doesn't work for you at all, but it's just something that I wanted to throw out there. Nap when your kids nap. Maybe you'll get, you would get more done at another time of day. So this is really what I want to challenge you moms with is think outside the box. Don't say that it has to look a certain way. And then find your most productive hour. When is your most productive hour of the day? Is it after your kids go to bed? Is it in the morning? Is it right after lunch? Is it at 10 a.m.? Like when is that time of the day when you are most productive, when you're functioning at your best? When is that? And then capitalize on that. If possible, rearrange your schedule for that hour. Because if you make that hour a priority and if you knock out a bunch of stuff in that hour or two when you're at your highest productivity, then the rest of the day, you could just be putting out fires and taking care of your kids and just not even getting a whole lot done. But if you have had those two or one or two really intentional hours, you got stuff done. So find those hours. And then number five is kind of a little bit controversial, but I'm going to put it out there. Teach your kids to stay in their room longer. Here's this amazing thing that I want to say. It's a little controversial, but as parents, we're the boss and we can teach our kids. Now, I understand there are children with special needs. There are different situations but most children can be taught to stay in their room for longer. Or if it's a baby or toddler, I like for me, when I had a little baby, I, I would get up and I would nurse the baby and that was my quiet time because I'm keeping the baby quiet because I'm nursing the baby, so the baby's staying quiet. When I had a toddler and a baby, I would nurse the baby and I would put my toddler, Catherine, she was two and a half, I would put her in her little high chair seat, and I would turn on a DVD. I know some people think that DVDs can be really bad, but I believe that well-used DVDs and movies can be a gift to a mom. I'm not a fan of having the TV on all the time. I'm not a fan of DVDs and movies be and TV becoming a babysitter. But I think you can be intentional and you can say, you know what, this 30 minute period during the day, I am going to have my children watch a DVD or watch a movie or watch this show so that I can have some quiet because I need that. And you work that into your schedule and then you can do it without guilt. No guilt because you have planned for this. And I promise you it is not going to hurt your child. Okay, well don't set them in front of something that's not appropriate for them, okay? But there's plenty of things out there that are very appropriate, very educational, and they can give you that quiet. So, either have your children stay in their room longer or find another creative alternative, like a DVD. Or you could even, I've done this before, sit your kids, like when they're toddlers, strap them in to their high chair, give them their breakfast or a snack and turn on a DVD so that you can have that quiet time. So number one, cut the excuses. Number two, go to bed early. Number three, get up 15 minutes earlier. Number four, take a nap when your kids do. And number five, teach your kids to stay in their room longer. On the flip side, if um, there's been times when, you know, oh, do I have a little visitor? Speaking of my kids coming coming in, okay. You wanna say good morning? Good morning. <laughs> um, on the flip side, don't see your children as interruptions. It's like I timed for him to come in at this time. <laughs> don't see your children as interruptions. And so to think of, I remember when I had one child in particular that was getting up and they would get up and they would, it was like they were interrupting my quiet time and I would get frustrated at them. And then I thought, what kind of example am I setting before them when I'm sitting there reading my Bible, spending time in God's word and my child comes down and I'm instantly snapping at them saying like, this is my quiet time. And I realized how just to invite my child to come and sit next to me and to participate with me and so to read with them and to pray with them and to involve them and to let them see mommy having her time in God's word 
And so make sure that you're not seeing your kids as interruptions because they are one of your greatest works that God has called you to as moms. Yeah, cranky Bible time, not good. 5 a.m. for five days in a row, way to go. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna share with you today. Um, if you are struggling, with your mornings and you would like a kick in the pants, I have a 14 day course called Make Over Your Mornings. You can find out more at makeoveryourmornings.com and you can sign up for day one for free at that site if, um, if you wanna ch check it out and see if it's a good fit for you. So that's makeoveryourmornings.com. I also wanted to mention that this afternoon at three o'clock, or thereabouts, I have some meetings today, but I think it'll work out at three o'clock. I'm gonna do, what are you doing? What kind of faces are you making? Are you making faces? No, nope, no, nope, you're just, um, I am going to do a scope on, um, ask me anything about writing a book and about publishing and self-publishing. So if you've ever thought you might want to write a book, you have any questions about publishing or self-publishing, come this afternoon at 3 p.m. We're going to do a money-making mom scope on, um, publishing. So self-publishing, writing a book, how to get a book deal all of that jazz. So anyway, um, I'm going to hop off and then I will hop back on and share some thoughts from this book, The 5 a.m. Miracle. Um, speaking of which, I was on Jeff Sanders' podcast today. Um, I think his podcast, I should know this. You silly boy. I think his podcast is called The 5 a.m. Miracle. I should know that. But if you look up if I, if you look up Jeff Sanders' podcast, hopefully it will come up. I think it's called The 5 a.m. Miracle. Um, 3 p.m. Central Time, so that would be 4 p.m. Eastern, right? Am I doing math right? Um, so I was on his podcast today. I don't think it was anything earth shattering, but for those of you who are interested in that sort of stuff, I was. So it was just released today. Yes, 3 p.m. Central. So anyway, oh, you heard it today. Thanks so much. Okay, um, I hope you all have a great day, and if I don't... <laughs> you silly boy, you're interrupting my No, but you're not an interruption, right? Okay. Um, if I don't talk to you or see you before tomorrow morning, um, have a wonderful day, and I will see you tomorrow at 7.30 a.m. for another morning motivation show.